We come together on this New Year's Eve and it's a, always a natural day in which we pause and reflect as we come to an end of a calendar year and begin a new one. And of course we do so tempted to that apprehension that continues with the ongoing pandemic. But hopefully any apprehension is overshadowed by joy and hope that comes from not the things of this world, but the things of our faith. This magnificent reality of Christmas that the church gives us now to continue to celebrate for these eight days and then for the next week until the season ends. But certainly first on behalf of the parish staff, I wanna wish all of you a happy new year that 2022 will be one of great peace and prosperity. The church though on New Year's Day gives us this solemnity of Mary, the mother of God. And that title is so important, but you and I can quickly gloss over it because it is so familiar to us. But again, it's a time for us to pause and reflect upon what this great truth means for her and for us. In all the times of the church, there will always be battles between truth and error. We have it today in so many ways, people who misrepresent what the church teaches. But in the early church, one of the greatest debates was on the very identity of Christ. Was he really God? Or was he just someone like God and close to God? Was he a human person that was somehow connected to the divine person? Or was his one personal identity that of that second person, the Blessed Trinity? But and then Mary fits into all of this. And so in Ephesus, the Council of Ephesus in 431, the church pronounced that Mary was indeed the mother of God. And this had to be so because the church had earlier solemnly declared that Jesus was not two persons. There was not a divine person and a human person so that Mary would only be connected to that second reality. But he was in his personal identity, God himself, under which two natures existed, the divine nature that is his from all of eternity and the human nature that he took on in the, full, in the womb of Blessed Mary. So he is truly God and truly man, but his personal identity is one. He is the eternal word of God, the only begotten son. And the magnificence of this truth then leads us to Mary's being recognized as the mother of God. And then what that means for us, in our second reading, St. Paul says that he was born of a woman so that we might receive adoption as sons. You see, when God joins human nature to himself in the incarnation, he joins all of us to himself. This is the fullness of that blessing first experienced in an impartial way by the chosen people of Israel that we hear about in our first reading. Christ is now the fulfillment of that blessing, his face shining upon us, being gracious to us, looking kindly on us to give us his peace. And the culmination of that blessing is the blessing we receive here in the Eucharist, as you and I are united to Christ. And we're meant then to be filled with his joy and his peace so that it's this communion with Christ and not what's going on in the world that is meant to animate us always. This is the source of our hope and our optimism and our communion with Christ. We are then, as we are united to him, then Mary takes on a special role for us too because God comes to us as a helpless baby He's held and he's nurtured by this sinless virgin, this woman who is full of grace and love. She is his mother and she is our mother too. Our gospel tells us the shepherds marveled at what they saw when they traveled to Bethlehem. And this is what is meant to be known by you and me. We are meant to marvel as we gaze at the child who was born to us and so the church gives us these eight days and then this season so that we might continue to reflect upon this, 
not just move on to the next aspect of our work and our daily realities. So we may more and more do what Mary, our mother, does for She keeps all these things. She reflects upon them in her heart. Then if we do that, the power of Christmas will remain there. And we will be filled with hope and joy, even now, sustained by that child born to us and by his power and his peace.